don't ever ask a flight attendant what day it is because we don't know. <laughs> and we also don't know where we are. So <laughs> just, we don't know the day or where we are. Ask somebody else, ask Siri, ask Alexa. Hey everyone, it's Jessica, flight attendant flipper. For those who are new to this channel, I am a full-time flight attendant and part-time reseller on Poshmark, eBay, and The Real Realm. For those who are not new, welcome back. So great to have you with me, and I appreciate you watching. Thank you so, so, so much. All right, today's video is going to be geared more towards the flight attendant aspect of my life. So there are a lot of times when I'm speaking to my friends and I use words and they're like, excuse me, pardon me, what did you just say? I don't understand you. What, what, what did you just say? So, uh, so this is actually for my friends or for anyone else who's the friend of a flight attendant or dating a flight attendant or married to a flight attendant or is thinking about being a flight attendant, help you understand our language. So in no particular order, I just wrote a bunch of them down. So bear with me. The first word is reserve. <laughs> Being a reserve flight attendant means that you're pretty much on call. And there's different types of reserves. There's short call reserve and long call reserve. And then there's ready reserve or sitting hot. So a reserve flight attendant does not know where they are going to be one day from the next. They know which days of the month they will be on call. So it with the possibility of working, but they don't know where they're going to fly, if they're going to fly, where they're going to be. We don't know. So a short call reserve is when you get a call from crew scheduling and you have two hours, at least two hours to report to the airport. So crew scheduling cannot call me at 10 a.m telling me that I need to be at the airport at 11.30. It has to be at least noon or later. So they have to give you at least two hours to get to the airport. Now, also mind you that we have reserved shifts. And so for my company, those are 3 a.m. to 3 p.m., 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., and 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. So you can be contacted at any time during that window and given at least two hours to report to your base airport for duty okay all right now long call reserve is the best in my opinion of being on reserve because they have to give you at least 12 hours notice so this actually allows you a little bit more freedom in terms of planning because you don't have to scramble and be at the airport within two hours you have 12 hours right? So that at least gives me some time to pack and get my dinner ready and do what I have to do. Anyway, so that's long call reserve. Now, these are just for my company. Some are similar amongst other companies, but for I'm speaking from my experience only, okay? Okay, so the opposite of being a reserve flight attendant is being a line holder. So basically, when I get my schedule as a reserve, I see which days I'm going to be on call. When you are a line holder, your schedule already has your trips in there for the month. So let's say today is November. Don't ever ask a flight attendant what day it is because we don't know. <laughs> and we also don't know where we are. So <laughs> just, we don't know the day or where we are. Ask somebody else, ask Siri, ask Alexa. Anyway, we don't know. We don't know. So we will get our schedules, like we're bidding right now for our schedules, which I will go over with you in a minute, but we get our schedules usually around the third week of the month for the following month. So the third week of November, we will get our December schedules, right? So a line holder will be able to see where they're going to be for all of December. Their trips, how many days, how many days they're off, how many days they're working, where they're laying over, who else they're working with, how many hours they're going to be flying, how much per diem they're going to get. It is, it is the ideal 
it's the goal, right? It's to hold the line because there's more flexibility and there's more stability in your life. You know, okay, Monday through Thursday, I'm going to be on this four day, but I have Friday, Saturday, Sunday off and I don't have to work again until this day. So you can actually plan things to do on your days off. Whereas when you're on reserve, you're just kind of sitting there waiting for the phone to ring. So it's definitely, the goal is definitely to hold a line. All right. So if you're a line holder, then you are someone who is holding a line, right? So this month, actually, I am a line holder. And that was great. And I actually somehow got Thanksgiving off, which I don't know how I got that off, but I did. So I'm not asking questions. I'm just taking it as a blessing. There you go. Okay, a turn. A turn. If I say to you, I'm just doing a turn, that means, all right, so my base uh, is Reagan, DCA. I'm if I say I'm doing a JFK turn, that means I'm going to JFK and I'm coming back. If I say I'm doing a Boston turn, I'm going to Boston and then I'm coming back. It's just one way and coming back. That's a turn. Okay. Now, a day trip is different than a turn. A day trip, you can have four or five, six legs. I forgot. I think our maximum legs is eight or nine in a day that we can be assigned contractually. I can't recall. Anyway, but um, a day trip is just that. It's a day trip. So it could be a very long one. Or it could be a short one. Um, but let's just say I have three legs. Like, for example, um, I'm going uh, Reagan, Boston, Boston, LaGuardia, LaGuardia, back to Reagan. It's three legs. It's not a turn, but it's a day trip. So it's just one day. A two day, if we say, oh, I have a two day, or I have a three day, or I have a four day, or I have a five day, that means we have a two day trip, a three day trip, a four day trip and god awful five day trips. Five day trips are like, whew. Anyway, so that means that that's the number of days we have. So if you have a two day trip, then you're laying over someplace one evening. If you have a three day trip, then you're laying over someplace two evenings. Does that make sense? Anyway, um, a pairing. So the actual trip in our, in our uh, schedule, it, it it's referred to as a pairing. So it will show you the pairing includes everything that's in that trip. So if it's three days, the pairing will include all three days, all the flight information. It's just, we just refer to it as a pairing. I don't even really know a better way to, to explain that. It's like a trip. Anyway, um, IROP. Oh, IROP. Ooh. How many reserve flight attendants just cringed when I said that? Or how many flight attendants, period, just cringed when I said that? IROPS, IROP, IROPS, whatever, irregular operations. So basically, your schedule is what it is. Even when you're on reserve, when they give you a trip, you anticipate that that's the trip you're going to actually work. Um, but that may not be the case depending on things that are outside of our control, right? So there goes IROP, regular operations, whether it be weather related or what have you. So we have a maximum number of hours that we can work in a day um, contractually. That number can go up legally if there are irregular operations at play, like through no fault of the company or what have you. So generally, we are not a huge fan of IROPS because that usually means our schedule has been changed. Um, we may not be laying over in the same place uh, that we thought we were going to be laying over in. So, but recently they've been happening enough. So yeah, that's IROPS, irregular operations. Layover. I think this is pretty obvious, but you know, oh, you have a layover and uh, Let's say you have a layover in Miami, right? Or you have, if you have a three day trip and you have your first layover is Miami and your second layover is Buffalo, then you just say, you know, I have a Miami layover and a Buffalo layover. And sometimes people, when they're bidding, which I will get into, but when they're bidding for trips, sometimes they will bid for specific layovers. Like, so let's say I no longer live in New York City, right? But I'm from New York, clearly. I'm from New York. So if I can, I will try to bid on New York layovers so that while I'm there, I can go see my friends, my family, what have you, right? Or let's just say, 
you don't like the winter and you live in New York and you're based out of New York, but you're senior enough to hold Miami layovers. So, I mean, in December, you're not going to probably go into the beach, but it's definitely going to be nicer than 22 degrees uh, in New York City, right? So you can bid for certain layover locations. So a layover. If you like this content, please make sure that you hit the like, subscribe, and bell notification button. And if you have any questions about being a flight attendant or have a video you want me to cover, please enter your suggestions in the comments below. I definitely pay attention to all comments. And I hope you are having a great, great day and you're prepping and getting ready for the holidays because they are about to be here. Oh, <sighs> safe travels and I'll see you soon. Bye.